Thank you, Senator McCoy. Senator Mello, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the legislature. And I, I rise in support of the motion to override. And I find it fitting, I guess, to stand up after Senator McCoy to discuss a few of the issues he raised. With all due respect to Senator McCoy's alluding to an issue of, of organizations, so to speak, that may receive state funds from this bill if they provide abortions, I've yet to hear Senator McCoy or any other senator on this floor this entire session question a Medicaid bill in the budget or any other bill that's come out of HHS in regards to who is getting the funds. Colleagues, pro-life groups responded to this charge from the governor and called it an 11th hour red herring because that is what it is. If people had the concern that Senator McCoy and the governor just mentioned or Senator Fulton, they would have stood up on every single bill that had a dollar of Medicaid cost with it, stood up and said, we've got to make changes. And no one has. That argument, for that matter, is simply that, a red herring. And pro-life groups have acknowledged that. They actually suggested, if we wanted to get to this issue, Senator Fisher introduced a bill in HHS. That was what they suggested, if we want to deal with this issue, to pass her bill. A bill that created a tiered system that prioritized local other health departments to receive state and federal funding. But not to veto, or not to not override LB 599. The underlying issue is this. I can respect colleagues who just take a different view on this. If they feel it's an immigration issue, I can respect that. We may disagree, but I can respect that view. But there are some facts that can't be overlooked. Senator Campbell mentioned in her opening, this entire S-CHIP program was created by President George W. Bush and his administration. I'm going to read you a press release that his administration sent out in September of 2003, HHS approves Massachusetts' plan to expand prenatal care to pregnant women and unborn children. HHS Secretary Tommy G. Thompson Day announced a Massachusetts plan to expand health coverage to low-income pregnant women and their unborn children under the state children's health insurance plan, SCHIP. The state expects nearly 4,000 people to receive coverage as a result of the change. The news coverage will give thousands of children in Massachusetts a healthy start by providing access to prenatal care, Secretary Thompson said. Prenatal care is crucial to the health and well-being of both mother and child. Vital services during pregnancy can be a lifelong determinant of, healthy, of health, and we should do everything possible to make this care available to everyone. Colleagues, I would argue that, one, this is not a partisan issue. It's not an ideological issue. I think Senator Harms said it best. We all can stand here on the floor and make our own rationales based on our own values. And at the end of the day, we're the ones who have to live with our decisions. Ultimately, like Speaker Flood, like Senator Campbell, and those who've co-sponsored and worked on this issue, I err on the side of life. I always have on this issue. I have on other issues. I think it's interesting, though, the facts lay out. The federal government, no less than 10 years ago, said this was a pro-life issue to them, to provide prenatal care to unborn children. You had right here, Massachusetts was the fifth state in 2003 to request this waiver, to provide this prenatal care to unborn children. It speaks volumes. There are some people who see this, obviously, as a pro-life issue beyond President Bush and his administration, states that applied for this waiver saw it the same way. I pose to you... One minute. ...to take a step back. We've seen the emails. We've seen the governor talk around the state, radio programs and otherwise, trying to draw arguments that, frankly, are very tough for him to draw. At the end of the day, this is a good policy for unborn children, and at the end of the day, it's good fiscal policy. I can respect Senator McCoy's family who talked about why are we providing this care. And I could say to that family, we're providing this care because it saves you more tax dollars in the long run. So we have less children born with low birth weights, less children born with less birth defects, and less children born with major diseases and health problems when they become United States citizens. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Mello. Senator Wallman. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the body. 
I appreciate everything what's been said. A pro-life doesn't just belong in the United States. That transcends country boundaries. It affects all women. And you take care of the babies, take care of the babies, and they will grow up to be healthier, less expense for the government, and it's a win-win situation. The immigration thing here is, is we're going to tie this to immigration. It's not about immigration, folks. It's about pro-life. Take care of the babies. If we don't want to take care of the babies, I guess that's our choice in here. But when President Bush put this in law, and it was passed, and we decided not to use it. So let's take care of the babies. Thank you, Mr. President.